Hi, yes. Welcome to a very chaotic cosplay vlog because we have less than two weeks away until we go to Anime LA and I have a ton of stuff to paint. So in case you missed my video where I talked about how me and my husband do cosplay, he makes stuff with foam and I paint it. One of my previous cosplays is Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, one of my favorite games. And I've been cosplaying her since 2017, but we've been slowly but surely upgrading the cosplay. And we recently, when I say recently, I mean a year ago, and that's how long it's taken me. We made her spear, and I'm going to be painting the finished prop, finally you know, after a year. So um, come join me from my floor and this is completely unplanned and unprofessional and this room is a mess. We're gonna have fun. Also, I'm still like 50% congested so I sound <laughs> really nasally and also my voice is really scratchy. So if you're sensitive to that, I apologize. You might wanna just skip this one because I'm gonna sound like a dying animal this entire <laughs> vlog, so. Here she is in all her glory in two parts for portability and most of the prop is still black although I painted the wood a year ago. So now we're gonna paint the rest of this today and whatever else I can get done. Hopefully I can get some stuff done because I have been in an ADHD paralysis for a long time and I'm trying to get out of it, trying to be productive and being sick hasn't helped. And just so you guys know, if you hear me coughing, it's not Rona, I got tested twice and it was negative. I was told that the common cold is going around, which is kind of hilarious that I got the common cold before I got Rona. I don't know if that makes me lucky, but um, anyway, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try to be productive today. It's already taken me four freaking ever just to start this video and just, just to start working on this. So um, without further ado, let's do some stuff. Do it. Got the goods. If you're not using a cheap plastic plate left over from your backyard wedding for your palette, are you really a cosplayer? <laughs> ah! broke it. All right, gonna add a little bit of brown. Just, just a tish. I'm not even gonna put it on top. Just, just a smidge. Just a little bit more. We're just trying to go for like a light tan with titanium. Let's do this. This guy is gonna be a nice off white and then I'm gonna add some silver scratches. People always ask me, what's your painting uh, technique? It's uh, just, Wing it, man. Switch that paint in. The cheaper the brush, the better. It looks like crap right up until the end, every time, all the time. Also, I took the mic off because it would be bothered. I don't have like a proper mount for it. So if the audio from henceforth is kind of crap, apologize. I definitely don't hate myself right now for that decision. Honestly, I have an airbrush and I could use that. I really should learn how to use it. It was a gift. <laughs> Very nice gift from a very nice friend. But getting me to try new things is very difficult. I know I'm an advocate for cheap brushes, but this boy is shedding all over the props. Okay, this Basically, my method for painting weather post-apocalyptic looking props is I'll take cheap brushes, the cheaper the better, if only they're not shedding. Why is it not focused on my face? Hi, yes. Hello, I'm here. And I will 
get just like a little bit of paint, like not too much paint on the brush and kind of dry brush it into the foam. And I'll let some of the primer, whether it's black or gray, kind of peek through, especially in the edges and the crevices. And that gives it not only more dimension, but also gives it that weathered look so that later I don't have to go through and weather it. Um, I know a lot of people that do props will um, like completely paint their prop first and then go in with black acrylic in the edges. I don't always like to do that. Sometimes I'll do that if I like overpainted an area, but I don't rely on that method because A, it takes more time and you have to like be more precise with your painting and B, I don't know, I feel like it has more of an authentic look when you paint it this way um, and it's less messy in the end because you don't have black acrylic everywhere. Cause I used to do that and like I went through so many paper towels like smudging it and all that. I don't know, I just always like the look better, especially for metallics when I use rub and buff. Um, with the dry brush technique. Am I good at painting pristine looking props? No, but that's where my airbrush is going to come in once I um, get that set up. But yeah, I really like this method. It, it has never failed me, especially for wood, because we're, I feel like we're, me and my husband have like gotten wood down pat, and we've also gotten leather down pretty well as well, making it look realistic. Other textures I'm still working on, but for the most part, I feel like we have a pretty good method going. Sometimes I'll go into the edges with my, mostly what I'll use is my black Posca pen to really carve out the edges, like the deep edges. And then sometimes I'll go in with a um, silver paint pen for edging and the, or a white paint pen. I've seen that method used before, which I really like. It really makes your prop pop on camera. It looks a little cartoony in real life, but we're cosplaying, we're doing it for the photos, right? We're doing it for the gram. I haven't painted in a really long time, but I'm actually really enjoying this and I hope you guys are enjoying seeing me do this because I miss it, I miss it a lot. I don't know why I put this off for so long. Maybe it's the executive dysfunction. Oh, yeah, if you guys have any questions though about my painting process or if you have any questions for my husband about making props, leave it in the description and either we will reply or we might make a dedicated video to prop making. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see my husband more cosplay related content from both of us because we really enjoy this. And also, um, stay tuned for an Anime LA vlog, which I hope I will actually make. Because traveling is really hard on me and um, crowds are really hard on me. So let's see if I actually do it. But, you know, well, encourage me to do it, please. In case anyone is wondering, yes, my back hurts me so bad after I do this. Why I don't just sit at a desk? I don't know. I always feel more productive. No! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just what was I saying? Oh yeah, I always feel more productive and more creative when sitting on the floor. I draw my best drawings sitting on the floor like a kindergartner. I can do. Okay, this is what she's looking like. Not too shabby. I got a little too vigorous with my dry brushing and I got some uh, white on the brown paint. So I'm definitely gonna have to do some touch up work, but uh, so far not looking too bad. I still have to put the blue stripe here and there's some blue teeth. I'm gonna wait to do any of the details until I have most of the base colors down. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this effect. I might go over it one more time with another coat once it dries. Cause uh, uh, even though we, you know, we like the, the weathered look, I want the white to pop a little bit more and maybe add some like brown in some areas. It really looks like dirt. But yeah, looks looks pretty good. All right, I think I'm gonna start on this bad boy. I need to look up what colors I need to use. I'm pretty sure for the most part, I'm still using white except for on the basket weave. We'll see.
she's looking like. It looks pretty gray, so I think I might go over it with one more coat. Um, and instead of mixing it with brown, maybe I'll just keep it really white. And then after I'm done with all the white parts, I need to go over and touch up the brown, because as we can see, I'm a little messy. And then I can go over with the accent colors, like the blue. And then I can do the silver scratches, which is cool. I know anyone who's not really familiar with the game will be wondering why I'm painting these parts white. Um, wouldn't it be cooler if it was a silver? But the really interesting thing about this game that I enjoy is that it is technically like a post-apocalyptic dystopia cyberpunk type of game, but it has like a prehistoric vibe to it. So all the metal pieces that are salvaged from the robots that are used for weapons are kind of a bone white or like a grayish white. And it kind of gives all of the props or all of the weapons in the game like a natural look to them and the animals them animals you know the robot animals themselves so they're like a whitewash paint painted look over the um the metal pieces that you salvage for the the weapons which again i think is really cool and it makes it easier for me to paint i like painting metal but also i use oil paint for that and it's raining today so i can't have the windows open because it gets real stinky you get real uh woozy if you don't have any windows open when you use oil paint. So today I'm just using the old acrylic. And for the silver scratches, I'll be using a paint pen, which is still oil, but it's a little bit more contained and I can turn on the fan and it'll be fine. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving how this is turning out and I'm wondering why the heck I didn't start on this a long time ago. And now it's crunch time. And we've now that we're finally going back to a convention, I'm finally, this is how I do though. I'm like the cram cramming person. I like did all my studying in my homework last minute. Still got an A, but yeah. I I also need to figure out a mask situation because obviously we're gonna be wearing masks indoors. So I need to like make a mask that would look appropriate for the costume. So I'm gonna be going through my um, fabric scraps for my costume and seeing if I can make a matching mask of some sort. Yeah. predicted my back is murdering me she's pretty much all done i did several coats and uh ready to start on the next phase i have taken way too long on this so i really need to get going so uh... many hours later since we last spoke, I mixed up some colors for the basket weave, and I want to eat all of these colors. I will call that one espresso, that one cafe mocha, and that one cafe au lait, and now I want more coffee. I'm gonna go make myself a latte. Oh yeah, look at that foam. Ooh. Gonna do the mid color. Ooh, that's, that's a bit light. Maybe I should start the dark color. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start with a darker color. I need a fluffier brush. Mm -hmm. I really need to get more brushes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start dark and work my way up light like I usually do. Focusing on keeping it lighter near the middle to really give it dimension. And as it dries, it kind of soaks in a little bit, even with the primer. So it kind of lightens up or darkens in this case. So that's why I kind of have to build the color up a bit. So the idea is you're not doing one solid uniform layer of color. You're really like brushing it, like kissing 
kissing the foam. And you wanna use the brush strokes to your advantage because if you're trying to simulate a um, textured, weathered material, you don't want it to be too smooth. And you wanna bring out some of the imperfections, the wrinkles, the pores. Really use the texture of the foam to your advantage and the brush strokes to your advantage. This is not a tutorial, by the way. By no means, I'm not a professional. I just do what works for me. And do what I think looks good. And right now the colors are, it's very similar to the color of the wood. So you're not gonna get a lot of, I don't know, it's gonna look kind of the same, but that's why I mixed these other, these other colors because I've noticed that the weaving on this is a little bit lighter and a little bit, it's like a different, slightly different color. So I'm gonna start with this base layer and then just kind of layer it. Typically what I do for leathers, cause this, you know, I don't want all one color. I want it to, I want there to be variation especially since it's aged and used. And she grips this. You know, her hands are, are not clean out there in the wilds. She's picking all sorts of weeds and brush and things to make her medicines and her arrows. No time for manicures, man. No time for manicures. I like to really get the edge and that's to like kind of highlight them a little bit, like the high edges. And I'll definitely be doing that for, with the lighter color once I get to that, to add highlights. Fortunately, since I'm using such light coats, it dries pretty quick. Ah! Oh my gosh, that was way too much. <clears throat> kind of use my hands to kind of like stipple it off. Just beat the devil out of it. All right, another day, another hat, another cup of coffee. And um, we still have some stuff to paint, so um, let's get to it. Let me uh, catch you guys up to speed because I did some more stuff last night, but my battery died, so uh, there's a lot that you missed. So first things first, I added the blue details. I love this because it looks like a little frowny. I finished the basket weave, and you can see here that I some spots are lighter than the other. I felt like that, that gave it some depth to it. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. So we have some more props to paint. These are technically already painted, but I need to add some detailing because it's a little too flat. It's looking pretty shiny though. And this is for Malik, I believe. This is my husband's cosplay. We also have this, uh, bad boy and again I just need to add some details some shadows and highlights and yeah and then we have the end of a, I'm guessing this is an axe I'm not really sure but yeah I need to add some some details so she looks a little more interesting and then I also have to do the wood because this is still black and it needs to be brown and then of course I'm gonna need to add the details the uh, wraps and the there's like feathers and leather stuff that I have to add to the, the spear, which means I'm gonna have to get my crafting materials out of the closet, which is gonna be fun. I also need to get my cosplay out to make sure nothing is damaged in storage and make sure it still fits because it's been like two years since I put that thing on. I've already color matched my hair extensions, so I don't have to worry too much about that. They're already good. I just need to make sure I have enough and I'm gonna have to start just making a tally of things I'm gonna need to buy. Probably more hairpins, more hair ties, and I wanna finally get some hair beads that actually go into my hair. Cause I bought a beading kit with some wooden beads and I can't for the life of me figure out how to get them in. And I really want the beads from, cause she has like a couple like bead things in her hair and I've never been able to do that, so. And of course, as we talked about earlier, I need to figure out what I wanna make my mask out of and start making a mask. But yeah, that's what my day is looking like I will uh, check in later.
is now 1.15ish. And um, let me show you guys what I've been working on. I helped add some details to this knife and it's not really wanting to focus. Focus. I added some weathering and silver scratches to these gauntlets. And they're looking pretty good. Did the same on this battle axe. Um, I'm not going for completely weathered. I did intensify the scratches and cracks, but I'm not going for like completely battered metal. I still have to fix up the symbols because he kind of went over the lines a bit. I'm gonna outline it a little bit with black and blend it in like I did with the other things. And then I still have to paint this to look like wood. But first I'm gonna do what I did to the gauntlets, to the chest piece and the helmet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just going into the cracks and crevices with the black pen and then blending it in just to really make the lines pop so the details really show and I forgot to uh, wash that, whoops. And then I go on the edges with the lighter color, with this one I'm using silver for like silver scratches like there's some uh, battle damage and it really helps to make everything pop out especially when photographing the costumes. I use just a little brush to kind of blend everything in and, split. and sometimes I use my finger. Um, so let me show you guys that. Another day, another hat, another cup of coffee. All right, so the plan was to finish painting yesterday. Did I finish painting? So that's what we're planning on doing today is getting this stupid thing to focus on my face. There we go, planning on finishing painting. I've done quite a bit today, but I wanna get to a point where I'm adding the um, fabric bits to the spear. I pretty much have the chest piece and the helmet almost done and the gauntlets. I just have to retouch some of my details because I didn't realize that um, he wanted to add some other colors to it and he got a little over the lines as well because um, the man's good at building things, he's not great at painting. So I have to touch it up a bit. Let me show you guys what I've done, what I've gotten done so far and then we'll finish up and then I'm gonna go through my materials and we're gonna pick out some materials for the ax and then check on my cosplay and then I'll, maybe I'll show you guys some other cosplays that I'm gonna be wearing to the convention. All right, so ax is done. I did the wood bits. You can't really see the detail very well, but I did the same method that I usually do with the dry brushing of the wood, the brown. So you can see the little grain details in there. Let's, let's stand up. And um, here's the yield chest piece, and I have to go over the red once it's dry and out and kind of fix up the uh, the shadows that I had done. The helmet's pretty much done. Let's get a better look at that. So I do take it back. I might have to go back over certain parts, but it looks pretty much done. He just has to add the visor to it because even though it is medieval, it is still Mandalorian. So he's gonna add um, a black visor that he can see through, but then you can't see his eyes and stuff. So yeah, um, that thingy over there is done. Almost done. This stuff is all done. Yeah, we're we're looking pretty good. The last step for the uh, the spear before I start adding the um, the other details is I forgot I want to add some silver scratches, which you won't be able to see that well, but it's the little details that matter, you know. It's what I enjoy doing because this is supposed to be like whitewashed metal, so you want to add some battle damage. I particularly like adding the silver scratches to like the edges, and then like sometimes I'll do like boop boop and try to vary the direction of the scratches. And I added some dirt to the tip. And uh, yeah, looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this paint job and the other things that we've made. Not too bad. Bruh. This is the pen I'm using, by the way. You guys know I'm recording a video, right? Can't see it. Oh well. So I forgot that I have to seal the spear before I can add any little details. So I'm just getting these out, sorting them, figuring out what I'm gonna use. And I need to paint these feathers because they look a little too um, fake looking. And then I have to cut strips from this scrap leather that I got at Joann's and I should be good to go. 
one eternity later. All right, here is my medieval Mara Jade outfit. I have most of it together. I just have to paint the goggles and add some details to it. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that the built-in mask isn't tan like the rest of it. Um, I was kind of going for like a cowl neck hood situation. And when I ordered it, it showed it in all in black. And so I'm like, oh, order it in tan. So I, I expected the whole thing to be tan, but it's not. So um, that's kind of disappointing, but whatever. It's too late now to figure something else out. I got this skirt hike to show off my shoes and I will link both the skirt hike and the hood in the description and if anyone has any other questions about the outfit the dress is from Amazon this is from Shein this is from Shein this is from Amazon yeah I can link things here it is up close and um, I'm gonna be wearing hair extensions because my hair is very short. I'm using the same hair extensions that I'm gonna be using for Aloy so they are ombre. Shoes were thrifted I got a wide angle camera so I could show my full fits and I still haven't figured out how to do that. Um, my camera was in the back of the room and I still can't show my full fits. So if anyone has any tips on filming outfits, please let me know because I bought this brand new lens so I could do lookbooks and I still have to put it in the back of my room. <laughs> it's still not working. Yeah, let me show you guys some of the other things that I have finished. Peep this. Here's the spear in all her glory. I hand painted, hand painted, I can talk, these feathers to look a bit more feathery rather than kids craft section. There's still a little bit of hot glue hanging off of it. I didn't film this process because I was getting overstimulated. You should see the state of my house right now. Construction is going on, so it's a mess. Here is a better look at the spear in all her glory and sorry there's like a bunch of scraps down here looking pretty snazzy and then here is some of the finished armor pieces and i'll show you guys the helmet in just a moment which you guys have seen the helmet a million times probably but i'll show you the finished look and the finished axe as well okay when i tell you that my office is the least chaotic room right now look at this crap just so you know it's not normally like this we are remodeling the garage as we're getting ready for the convention and this looks like it, it, it's a mess it's a big freaking mess here is the helmet all finished and then here's some pieces that i still have to paint pretty cool and i still have to paint this helmet but we're 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 getting stuff done and here's the axe in it, all its glory and the husbando in all his glory. Let's show off the details. And the doggo is uh, trying to beat down the door because she's mad that she's alone. And then we also made this um, this shield previously from another shield that we had, but we did a we did a whole uh, revamp on it. It looks pretty good. And it has the mythosaur thingy on it. Very very cute. Talking about you. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna end the vlog there. Um, this is probably already really long and we still have a lot to do. And as you can see, it's pretty chaotic around here, but I am gonna be vlogging the uh, the convention. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. And um, who knows, maybe I'll vlog a little bit here and there and I'll add it to that video as well. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do. Um, we have fun here. We're still kind of, you know, we're still new here. We're, we're still, we're still figuring out our vibe, but so far it's been a lot of fun and I've been really enjoying making these videos. We'll be back to our regular scheduled thrifting, vintage, all that pretty soon after the convention, but we will be including cosplay in this, this channel. So if you like that as well, if you like Ren fairs, if you like cottage core, night core props and swords and things like that. Um, we do that as well. It's a lot of fun. Thank you guys again. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.